again. I suppose most people will remember the Cregan as being one of the worst battlegrounds in the history of Ulster's troubles. In the 70s and early 80s, somebody like me, an outsider, would simply not have chosen to go there. And yet today, it's all different. From being one of the most notorious housing estates in Europe, it has become again a place in which people want to live and hope for the future. What's brought about this metamorphosis? Turn your face to the town. Turn your face to the mountain At every turn of the road There's a memory Again of the past In your arms At every turn of the road A possibility I can't say it was depressing. I was about 10 in 1969, 1970, and 1971, Craigan became part of what was called Free Dairy, a no-go area. There were barricades just around the corner. And at that age, I suppose anything's exciting at that age, but there were riots, there were the occasional shootings, and, you know, very serious things if you were an adult, but when you're about 10 or 11, it's great. The school was a sort of oasis in the middle of rioting and all sorts of uh, disturbance. And for the children, uh, we were the only sort of place of calm in the immediate area. And I remember, you know, coming through riots, CS, gas, bullets and bombs to the school and coming into the school and the totally different atmosphere within the school where things were normal. Youngsters were walking about and teachers were walking about perfectly normally as in any other school and there was mayhem going on outside. I think Craigan has a very negative image or has had a very negative image from those outside looking in. But uh, for local people living here, I mean, there is an awful lot going for the area. I mean, unlike a lot of large housing estates, uh, public housing estates, Craigan's fairly well spread. The actual housing mix, there's no major uh, uh, multi story developments. It's all uh, traditional two, three bedroom housing. Uh, there's a lot of green areas. Uh, there's a very good quality of schools in the area, both at a primary school and secondary level. And I think it's a good place to raise a family. I have lived through it a lot, from the B specials right through. And so I have seen a lot of injustice. I've felt a lot of hurt, but I feel it is time to stop feeling bitter and stop the anger that's grown inside it, inside us. Don't let it grow inside our children. How easy it would be to let the stigma of the 70s cloud the future of the Cregan. The marvellous thing is that the school teachers of this area aren't just doing an adequate job in counteracting the effects of what happened in the past. They're doing a brilliant job. Young people in the Cregan are getting a first-rate education that's the envy of many others, and it's the best possible grounding for a better life. To me, Cregan is a lovely area, and recently the appearance has changed as well. There's been more um, litter campaigns. There have been a lot of litter campaigns, you know, to clean the area up. I think it was always stigmatised as being a very run-down area, but now it's all changing. I would watch the political environment going on, and especially now when there was a chance of peace coming about. I think everybody watched it, and everybody's got a little more optimistic than they were past. 
Do you genuinely feel that it affects your lives? Well, when you've grown up with that, you don't really know any different. But there, a um, few weeks back, I remember being scared for the first time. It was when the shooting was in the Rising Sun. It was the first time I was ever scared. I think now there is a, a happier atmosphere in the town and at our school. Um, a few years ago, people wouldn't have been as optimistic as they are now. And at our school, I used to be one of the small girls, and now I'm the bigger girl. And I find that the smaller children look up to me, you know, and everybody seems to be happy and everybody gets on well. And yes, there is a better atmosphere. What do you particularly want to do? Have you got a career in mind or a job prospect in mind? I haven't really fought in jobs at the moment after you. What are you good at? Snicker. <laughs> <laughs> but it started off really bad area. You could tell in the buildings. But now you can see, even in the buildings itself, they're gradually getting better and better as it's going along. Like, even my school, that used to be like a slum. But now, like, we get chosen from Belfast Queen's University for a computer project. And that was miniature computers out of all the schools in Derry. So we obviously, we obviously have built up a name for ourselves. Craig and people are the best of people you could possibly get they mix with. They're very easy going and, I mean, they're splendid friends. The environment is important, but I really think it's the people that I actually live there are more important and how you get on with them. And actually the Craig and people I consider are the best of them in the world because they're caring and kind and they do look out for one another, for one another. And I'm just proud to be from the Cregan. If you were to write a school report about the work of the teachers of the Cregan, the phrase could do better would certainly not crop up. Because against a background of extreme social difficulty, their achievements, quite frankly, have been remarkable. Many children now uh, have a different set of priorities uh, from the priorities that the children would have had 10, maybe 15 years ago. The aim then was to leave school, get a job from secondary schools. The aim now seems to be more along the lines of leave secondary school and further your education. So we would have a massive increase last year and the year before, for example, in those children leaving at 16 and going on to the Northwest Institute to further and higher education here in the city. Uh, or going outside the city uh, for, for, for further education, or indeed staying on here to take part in the new GNVQ courses which we've recently begun. Uh, and many of the schools in, Derry, in the Derry area are, are cooperating in that. Uh, so I think it's a, it's a change of emphasis of, uh, if there aren't jobs there, I will go on educating myself until I can see a space for me. And if I don't see a space for me, then I might give up. But certainly it's not as, they're not giving up as readily as they used to. In the school, I mean, one of the th strengths, I think, of the school has been that from a very early stage, we had a very strong home links programme, which meant that every single teacher in the school went out to visit the parents of every child in her class. They were given time on their timetable to do that. So they went out to visit the, the homes of the children, and that actually worked two ways. It helped the parents to understand the school, and it helped the school to understand you know, the difficulties the children, the backgrounds the children might be coming from, and it was a very salutary two-way process for the school. Parents are involved in a, a wide number of aspects of the work of the school, um, with parents helping in classrooms, particularly with um, children who have learning difficulties, with parents involved in paired re reading, um, they give talks in classrooms, they take part in field trips and so on, and they also are, are sitting examinations themselves. Um, they're doing GCSE at the moment in English and Mathematics. And we also have parents writing materials for use in the classrooms. Even in a school which is described as a non-selective school, that is a school for which the pupils are not selected as they are for a grammar school, that uh, they achieve their full academic potential at all levels. Uh, we have uh, had A-level courses in the school for over 20 years now. Uh, we have had to fight off government rationalisation, that is, uh, trying to reduce the schools that did A level on grounds that our youngsters wouldn't have access to them anywhere else, and that we know, in spite of the selection process, that we have many youngsters who are capable of that, and we absolutely insist that we are given the opportunity to develop that potential. 
In many ways, I think it's true to say that what's going on in Cregan schools mirrors the changes taking place in the community. St Mary's, for example, has been given a real feather in their cap with a British Government Charter Mark Award for Excellence. We try to engender in the pupils a sense of pride and confidence and that basically they can do it. We have very high expectations for our pupils and I'm very glad to say that the parents also have very high expectations for their daughters. And I think this has all come together and, and helped us very much. Um, a few years ago, for example, we had about 30% um, of our pupils uh, pass GCSE examinations. This year, it's 96%. Many of the children who leave here to go to university, would some of them would go to local universities, but some of them go off to England. Uh, I would imagine that if pupils got the opportunities to stay at home, and I think maybe with the, the kind of the changing tide that there is in Derry, that there'll be more opportunities for them to gain employment at home. Uh, but equally, we would hope that they would be sufficiently well equipped to take up the opportunities wherever they happen to arise, in the sense that when they leave here, we feel that you know, their self-confidence, their self-image is very much enhanced, and that that would mean that you know, they could take their place wherever they find it, be it in Europe, be it in England, or hopefully be it at home. Uh, I think many of us who, who did live in the, in, in the Craigan area and who, who now do actively want to put something back into the community, uh, we don't just see hope on the horizon. Um, we see things actually happening now. We, see, um, we can see money being spent on housing and refurbishment of housing just across the way from us now, um, which, which for the first time in a number of years you see people coming to their front door and standing with some pride at their front door rather than getting out, in and out of houses quickly. And the doors are opening again um, from they were in, uh, in, in the middle 60s when everyone lived in everyone else's house and uh, you were proud of what you owned and so on. I think that, that, is, that feeling is coming back to the dairy area and to the Craigan area specifically again. In all the schools too, there's a strong accent on getting along together, on learning to live side by side with people of a different outlook. And above all, being part of the community. To this end, several parents have been encouraged to become involved in a range of classroom and extracurricular activities. Everyone recognises that creating hope for the future among the young people depends to a great extent on the support and enthusiasm of the parents. I try and get involved with the schools as much as possible. Right? I have a daughter here at St Mary's. I am a member of the Past Pupils Committee here. Right. And we um, organise quizzes for them, table quizzes, once a month, which is great crack. Um, I take the children myself, 11 to whatever age they want to be, for netball once a week. And they love it. The children love it. The children at Craigan need places to come, and this school is just gives them so many opportunities. The parents of today are demanding education for the children. They see a new world for the children through education. They demand 100%. The school demands 100% of the pupils. They demand 110% of their teachers. And that is the reason why I would have become involved in this school and doing what little I could to help. Some of the young people that you were speaking to earlier believed that there was hope and part of the reason they believe that there is hope is because we as parents are interested in their future and I think that's important. Of course it's not all sweetness and light. Inevitably in an estate like this there are youngsters who escape the safety net the schools provide, who see only life on the dole stretching before them and who simply aren't motivated to stay on the right track despite all the strenuous efforts that teachers, parents and youth workers make on their behalf. They've lost sight of their own potential. I mean, because it is a way of life, because it's something that's been handed on from one generation to the next, that there's, a, there's a, an apathetic acceptance as to their situation here. And it's something they just accept the dole as a way of life. And I think one of, one of the priorities of the youth centre will be to, to instil in them a sense of their own worth again, a sense of, of uh, self-confidence, of their ability to achieve what they want to achieve. It's all right. Good crack when you're up my mitts, but there's really nothing to do. You know, like you could sit around that street corner or something and tell jokes, but that's it. 
And get under trouble. And get under trouble. I just hang around the streets because there's nothing else to do. Mostly. It's all the things I do. I lay around the house and go out in all the time. And hang around street corners with my bits and stand talking. Do you do anything that you think would be considered wrong? No. He's a good boy. Going <laughs> <laughs> up the park. That's it. Going up the park. Going on the house. Stand about, stand about the street corners now. Going up the green on the bikes. Going up the... That was last week. Rubber. This is so stupid. All the weeks when we started. It's... Well, we go up the green and go runs on the bikes now. Go to the baths. What's the worst thing about living around here? There's nothing to do. Stone in the arm, man. Things I got there, throwing stones at people's houses. Table dashing and all. All the younger swans. All the younger ones do. Two years ago, the local youth club closed down, leaving a trail of failure and disaster in its wake. And the building was then badly vandalized. Now it's being rebuilt, and when it opens again, everyone is hoping that a fresh start with new facilities will provide the boost the kids around here desperately need. Over the years, I think there's been a, there's been a dramatic change in the attitude of the young people, uh, whereas before it was very much seen as an activity centre, and people just came in for activities and went home again. It's now seen as an opportunity for other things, such as training, for example, such as uh, discussing social issues, such as getting information on alcohol or drug abuse. It's seen more as a community centre. It will, you know, it will adopt a programme to cater for that. Well, what we hope to do is to look at youth work from a different perspective, look at it from the community point of view, where youth and young people are part of community development. So we're actually taking youth as a priority, but within the context of community and having a programme for the community, with the youth programme being a very important part of it. It's easy to understand how generations of unemployment can breed apathy among youngsters. And yet there are also those who've been born and bred in the same environment, and yet who've had the imagination and the drive to make a start on changing things for the better. Men like Seamus Heaney, who runs the Cregan Community Initiative. The Craigan Community Initiative was set up in 1988 and it did uh, an audit of the area looking at potential resources and things maybe that people could do for themselves in order to get themselves uh, out of the problems that they were experiencing locally. Uh, one of the things we focused on was the, the lack of services locally both in retail and training and in job creation opportunities uh, and so we developed a package that was put to government uh, and to the International Fund for Ireland. Uh, and as a consequence of that, Craig and Enterprises Limited was set up in order to develop uh, the Rathmore Centre. I mean, it's never been the case that local people had ownership of a development like this. Uh, for the first time now, structures have been set up whereby the local community itself will benefit from the profits that are generated by the provision of services for the local area. What services? Well, initially they're going to be retail services. Uh, most of the services will be a large supermarket, a uh, chemist and things of that nature, a shopping mall, which will provide for a range of different retail services. Along with that, we will have, hopefully, the Department of Health and Social Services coming in, coming in and setting up an advice centre to give people direct advice uh, on benefits uh, that they're entitled to. Uh, and how to go about getting those benefits. And in addition, we'll have community service units, which will be units which are going to be made available to the community itself to get involved in initiatives which address their needs. The Rathmore Centre, as it's to be called, will open later this year and will totally transform what is now a derelict site. In many people's minds, this is a symbol of the changes they want to see more of happening in the Cregan. Against a background of unemployment levels of between 45 and 55 percent, there has to be more investment here to create the sort of job opportunities United Technologies has been able to offer. Their factory, formerly owned by BSR, then Essex International, has survived as the sole industrial employer throughout the Cregan's most difficult years. A 
another good news story. The creation of a better landscaped environment has already begun with the Greenwalk Community Park, something much more thought out and sympathetic. This is Greenwalk, and the Greenwalk used to be an area with a lot of hedgerows and a lot of green areas in it. Uh, and again, probably as a consequence of the troubles and the violence in the streets, etc., during the 70s and 80s, the whole area became decimated, the trees were uprooted, uh, the area became uh, very dark and unsafe to, for people to walk about, particularly in winter evenings, etc. Uh, and it became something of a dumping ground. So it's signal to the community was I am an area for abuse, come and abuse me. Uh, now various things had been tried uh, during the 80s in order to re-establish the area as a community park uh, and all of those failed. Uh, what we did uh, through Craig and Community Initiative was uh, to carry out an, an amount of research uh, within the community. Uh, we went to each household, uh, asked them what they would like to see in the area, the type of uh, amenities they'd like uh, made available in, in it. And gradually, over a period of some months, we evolved four different schemes for Greenwalk. And then from discussions with people in uh, the community centre, uh, we arrived at the model for redevelopment of the area. Is there any significance in the design of this bit that we're standing in? Yeah, this ringed area reflects Green and Avellac, which is a ringed fort, a stone fort uh, in Donegal, just uh, three or four miles from here as the crow flies. Uh, and I think we wanted to keep that kind of archaeological, historical feature uh, within the community park itself. So the story of the Cregan today is all about improvements in housing, in job prospects, in the surroundings. For people who remember the bad days of the 70s, there's a new mood of optimism. The energy of people who work here, there's so many community groups based in Craigan, it really, it's very impressive and you know, it, it pits a, almost puts you to shame. The, they're working with limited resources, there, there are so many enterprises around here. It's, it's very heartwarming, you know, and it's good that people still have faith in Craigan, which is nice to see after all this time. Another noticeable feature is that some of the original houses are now vastly better looking and better quality. There's been a massive programme of renewal and repair by the housing executive. And while there's still a lot to do, there's no doubt overall standards are higher than before. A further excellent example of the new thinking is the Beechwood Court sheltered housing development for older people living here. It stands on what was once a piece of wasteland, a small complex on a human scale. 11 bungalows, 26 flats and a much used common room where dances, various classes and bingo sessions are all held. The support from the residents is really enthusiastic. Well, a lot of them were original Craigan residents um, who came here with young families in the post-war period when they first started to build Craigan. Um, they brought their families up here and then left in the mid-70s and moved outwards to sort of the Gallia areas which were really being built at the time. Um, when this particular scheme was being planned and um, they all wanted back home again to Craigan and we had so many applications. The Housing Association had over 300 applications to come to 37 actual dwellings and we found that we have old neighbours who were neighbours in prefabs in Craigan and Central Drive um, living next door to one another in the flats which was extremely interesting. We've got cousins who hadn't seen each other in years now living beside one another, which is fantastic as well. And um, it's just like a reunion of, of people. The houses that make up Beechwood Court are very different from the houses that were originally in Cregan. Somebody obviously gave it a great deal of thought. Yes, uh, a great deal of planning went into actually the scheme itself. They did try and integrate the red brick you can see um, is the same as the red brick of the original houses that were started in Craig. And if you go across the street, you'll see that there is red brick houses there that changes further on up in Craig. And, but the planning itself was to try and um, integrate what would look like normal housing into a normal housing area but still provide the facilities for the older person who would want to live independently but who would also would want to have somebody there if they needed them and that's the whole idea of having sheltered housing. The men and women who live in Beechwood Court are at pains to point out that they don't live in an old people's home. They each have their own little house or flat 
and they enjoy the same rights of tenancy as anybody else living in rented accommodation. <laughs> I've been on holiday here <laughs> for the last couple of years. It has been like a holiday in many ways. Once I get on my feet and once I got two hip replacements done and been through all that, so now I'm just looking forward to having a great time. Well, I enjoy the good neighbours we've got. And you're never, never lonely. They're all good spirited and all happy. And we all can have our parties in our common room. And they all can have our bingo sessions. And we can love it up. We're not that old, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but we all have a great time. Oh, I've seen a lot of changes. There are no, no church. This was waste ground when I was in the crack. And just look at it now. Couldn't bet it. You think this is a big improvement? It's a big improvement. And I think the neighbours around this part of Craigan would say it was a big improvement. Well, I've been here now in the Craigan from 1949. And uh, during my time in Craigan, there were happy days. And with children, we had all with children while I was in Craigan. And read them all. And we had all good neighbours in Craigan too. And when we all moved up to Craig and we were all very poor. <laughs> we were all just starting off because at that time there were no work, no homes, no nothing for most of the people that got a house in Craig. And we were very thankful to get a place in Craig instead. If you go to cook your dinner and forget to close your door, you have the fire brigade at the door in two minutes. <laughs> and then again, if you fall and pull the <laughs> string, you are warned at the door. And like, she's our Warren, but we're so friendly, we're all first term names, so we just call her Maureen. And when I'm one of everybody, and this is Mary, and this is Margaret, and this is Pansy, and this is John, and that's another John. We're all just one big happy family. The spirit that's so evident among these older residents is typical of the majority of people in the Cregan. Memories of the past may be painful, at times bitter, but there is a real determination never to slip back into the slough of despond. It's a community that has cried together and laughed together and grown together and that only can bring good. That itself is a lot. Uh, people are very close. As I say, there is a spirit within the community of a revival of hope and I think it has to get better. Love. Definitely. I think everybody helping together and everybody pulling together and forget about what colour you are, what religion you are, whatever, and learn to love. I must admit I thought coming to the Cregan would be a real downer, but it's been anything but. As a housing development, it may lack character, but its people certainly don't, and the redevelopment of this area is largely in their hands. All right, there are problems that won't go away, like unemployment, but if the potential for investment in the area depends on a stable community with a sense of its own worth and a feeling of get up and go, then who knows what the future might bring. Well, next week I'm in Tempo in County Fermanagh. Why don't you join me then? And there are voices calling, minds and hearts.